Hi, Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here, and today I'll be covering global Tesla and EV sales from around the world in the month of January. And if you want to get a realistic picture of what's happening, we first have to understand how Tesla manufacture and deliver their cars throughout a quarter. Listen to this. We have more demand than we can really address, and, and there's a lot of things, levers we could pull to increase that demand, which we are not pulling. So it's really not, not an issue. But, you know, Part of the reason why we don't release the monthly deliveries number is just because like, it varies quite a lot by region, and then the media tends to read all of, all sorts of nonsense into deliveries. And so, like, you know, we'll have like a thousand cars reach a country one month, and none the next month, uh, and then people, or, or like a hundred, like a hundred the next month, trickle in or something because those were the numbers that were registered in one month versus the next. And people say, oh, wow, Tesla sales dropped by a factor of 10. It's, no, it's like the boat arrived in January, <laughs> okay, and, there was, and not all the cars got registered in January, and some got registered in February. And then in March, it's back up again. Um, and so that people read in all these things, which are, they, they assume deliveries are a proxy for demand, which is not the case. For, it, it is the case for other car companies, but in our case, it, it really needs to be parsed into orders and deliveries. So, so it's not... Orders is not a true measure of demand. It is just a measure of that's the amount of stuff we need to do to meet our production and delivery number. So if we if we were at least orders, people would try to read the tea leaves and say, oh, demand for Tesla is growing or dropping. It's like, no, we're, we're just not pulling the, the levers that we could pull because there's no point in trying to amplify demand substantially beyond our ability to produce it and, and deliver it. That's, that's the, that, would, that would just make people upset. So remember, in January and February, Vehicles produced will be in transit and won't show up as delivered until the boats arrive in Europe and people receive their cars in March. Also to note, Tesla produced most Model 3s for the North American market in the last 6 or 7 weeks of the quarter, so again, most deliveries will occur in March. So with that said, let's look at what's been happening in early 2020 so far. Starting in China, and we can see that the Model 3 has become the top selling EV. Now, here's an interesting thought. In Q1 of 2019, Tesla delivered around 5,000 Fremont made Model 3s into China, and in Q4, the number was around 10,000. So, as Tesla is no longer shipping from Fremont to China, they'll have an additional 5 to 10,000 Model 3s to deliver elsewhere. But the question is, where? And my guess is Europe as Tesla has already sold out of all Model 3s in Q1 in Germany. And we see the very same thing in the UK, which has shown very strong demand since Model 3 deliveries started in June. And looking at the numbers, the UK could be one of the biggest markets in Europe for the Model 3 in 2020. Looking at Australia, which only started deliveries around October of 2019, we can see the same thing happening, with Model 3s all sold out in Q1 and estimated deliveries being pushed out to May of 2020 if you purchase now. I'm seeing three things converging which could surprise a lot of people that are expecting a low delivery number in Q1, which are, as mentioned before, strong demand from around the world showing that Model 3s built in Q1 are already sold out all the way up until May. Second, China is on pace to deliver around 10 to 15,000 Model 3s for the quarter. And third, if we know demand is solid and Tesla sell each vehicle they produce, then consider this. Tesla have increased the amount of Model 3s produced each quarter since the start of production. And if we want to be really conservative and say that Tesla Model 3 production will be flat in Q1 of 2020 compared to Q4 of 2019, then Tesla will produce 24,000 more Model 3s in Fremont than they did in Q1 of 2019. Not to mention, Tesla will have 5,000 more Model 3s available to supply from Fremont as they won't need to ship them to China. So when you compare the numbers of Q1 of 2019 to Q1 of 2020, we can see that in Q1 of 2019, Tesla delivered around 63,000 total vehicles, of which 51,000 were Model 3s and the rest Model S and X. In 2020, we can assume that Tesla will deliver around 10 to 15,000 Model 3s for Q1 into China. And if Tesla can simply deliver 87,000 Model 3s, which was the same number that they produced in Q4 of 2019, with about 15,000 Model S, X and Y for the quarter, 
then we could be looking at around 112,000 deliveries for the quarter, which would match deliveries from a record Q4 of 2019. That, my friends, would mean a 77% increase from Q1 of 2019 to Q1 of 2020. And then consider this, every quarter going forward should be stronger, with Model Y and Made in China Model 3 ramping. If you guys want regular updates, I'll keep updating the numbers on Twitter as they come out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. A huge shout out to all the Patreons that make these videos possible, and please consider supporting the channel so I can get more content out to you guys. And for those of you that have been asking about the Tesla documentary series, episodes 2018 and 2019 are both being worked on. And finally, remember all content in this video is simply my opinion only, and I do not recommend buying or selling any financial instruments. So until next time, I'll see you guys soon. But before I go, I've got a bonus clip that I want to play for you, in which Elon makes a great analogy between deliveries and GDP. Enjoy. Why don't you reduce some of it by disclosing maybe on a, on a monthly basis your deliveries? Um, I, I think that would actually be counterproductive, uh, because people read too much into what occurred in a month. I mean, e even at a quarterly basis, things can be lumpy. And so the more granularity uh, that's provided, so let's say at a monthly level, the, the, the people would reach all sorts of conclusions that don't make sense. Yeah, it's sort of like if you calculated like GDP of a country, or say of the US, GDP on Sunday is extremely low. And GDP on Monday is extremely high. <laughs> but this does not mean GD nothing's really changed. <laughs>